K through the acting mayor to Councillor Myers. Yeah, that's a there's many facets to that question. The, uh, Sorry. the that's okay. I'll try my best to, to <laughs> cover it. Uh, I believe when I when I did the, the research that I did in this, when I was referring to other communities, is the the, the reason they needed a bylaw is because they attached the user fee. Was typically why they needed a bylaw. The bylaw, we don't need a bylaw because it is addressed in the Fire Protection Prevention Act in the Ontario Fire Code. Uh, the guidelines that we use vary throughout the province, although they are all very similar. Uh, they are, they do vary to some degree. Everybody has a line in the approval process that speaks to courtesy to neighbors. Uh, Close on the line, open windows, air and smoke. Everybody has a line that speaks to controlling the size of the fire, burning clean, dry material, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so I don't know if that directly answers your question. The, the necessity for a bylaw isn't there to, re we don't need one to regulate it because it is regulated by the Ontario Fire Code. Uh, I don't know if okay. the city solicitor could add to that or in terms of the requirement. Uh, uh, through you, Acting Mayor Bernie, to uh, Councillor Myers, yeah, I, I would concur with uh, what um, uh, Paul Milosevic had to say. Really, the my, my comments about not needing a bylaw per se were because there's a provincial act which is going to trump our bylaw at any rate. In terms of fire safety, that's the act you look to. In terms of user fees, if you look at how much money po uh, fire is spending going out and attending at different properties and issuing the actual permit, I'd say the city's out of pocket on that. Yeah. But I don't think that's what you were going for when you were asking about you. It was more safety, I understood. Uh, through you, if, Mr. Actimir, um, I guess where I'm coming from on this is that I, I think of things like our noise bylaw, and I'm going to liken that to a, a nuisance. That if the neighbor is doing something that um, contravenes our noise bylaw, we have some real teeth to be able to address that. The most um, disturbing part of this, which I was getting from my constituents, which is why I brought this forward to ask for a report, was around this nuisance component. Uh, I'm sure the health, and I did check with uh, Dr. Northern and uh, Sherry Cleves, the environmental officer at uh, Global Public Health, and they do have some concerns around the particulates and so on, but that's not what I'm even talking about. I'm talking about the whole nuisance aspect of this smoke, because with these, the recreational backyard fireplaces, or whatever they're called, outdoor fireplaces now, they become so popular that that, and they're on top of each other. And I think you said it, Paul, in your report, you can't control where the wind's gonna blow. It becomes a nuisance, plain and simple. Um, apart from the dirty burning, that I'll call it, when it's noxious materials that might have black stuff that actually gets on your clothes and so on. So I, I'm still feeling that when I think about what the constituents asked for, that this is falling short in some way, and I don't know that I have what the answer is, but I compare it to the noise bylaw thing that to me has some teeth that we can, so please, through you, Acting Mayor, I think. Thank you, through you, Acting Mayor, uh, Bruni, to Councilor Myers again, maybe I can assist. There is a bit of a gap in our authority to pass a bylaw like that. The fire code deals with fire safety. That's right. where we get the teeth for our policy and any charges that fire lays come from that. In terms of the nuisance aspect, which I, I understand now as you've explained it, um, our option would be, I guess, to completely prohibit outdoor burning yeah. within the city. Yeah. But to say it's a nuisance in uh, you know, certain residential areas and not others, or yeah. where uh, it, it would be an enforcement uh, nightmare. So yeah. it would be all or nothing, I guess. Thank you. And through you, um, Acting Mayor, that's exactly where my constituents were coming from. What they had hoped to see, I think, in the end was that we would be banning uh, the outdoor burning period within the city. And, and I guess that, again, I hearken back to trying to pretend that we're at a cottage when we're sitting on, you know, Plain Tree Drive, four feet away from our neighbor's um, kitchen window. Uh, or they've got laundry out or something using the solar drying for their laundry. So I guess that I, I'm, I understand where our staff are coming from, but I'd like to ask, um, I guess that we'll find it when we go to perhaps vote on this. Maybe we need to pull this out of consent and vote on it separately because I'm, I'm almost of a mind where I'd like to see us uh, vote on this um, as an item to see if it is what council wants or do we need to go the, the further step and, and look at a complete ban or do we want to try? I, I don't want to waste our staff's time and that we try this for a while and then we still have the nuisance issue. I don't know if that's what other councillors are hearing. I, I'm only hearing from my constituents that it was the nuisance aspect. It wasn't about health. It wasn't about um, the other. So uh, 
I leave it to you and the clerk, Mr. Acting Mayor, to decide how we should deal with this. Uh, Councillor Butler. Unless there are no Is other there anybody else? questions. I didn't see any hands going up. Oh. Yes, but we're still talking about 511. Or 5L. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's go with uh, Councillor Mick and then Councillor Nero and then back to Councillor Butler. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Uh, after the last speech, I feel I must speak up. I'm in a neighborhood where our lots are 50 feet and 75 feet wide. They're wider than a lot of people's cottage lots. And uh, people have invested their money in them. They can't afford a cottage. They, they like the outdoor experience. And we do live in a, our subdivision, I consider, a bit rural. Um, I think the whole thing here boils down to neighborly consideration. And I don't know whether, Paul, whether you'd be able to... I, I know the fire department will respond to any call, and uh, I think they may have uh, performed as peacemakers in the past. And I think uh, hours of fires could probably be uh, put on the permit. But to uh, tell people you can't have a fire and you can't afford to uh, outdoor live any other way, you can't afford a cottage, and another thing it doesn't matter what kind of law you you bring in it says in there you can use it for cooking so as long as you sit there with a bag of marshmallows or a package of wieners you can say you're cooking so uh, and if the power goes out you, you also have a, a fire to cook on and I, I think it's all, all boils down to neighborly consideration and to ban fires for all those folks out there that are considerate and have been doing this for years with no problems, I think is being, uh, it's, it's like hitting them over the head with a club instead of just putting out some <coughs> common sense guidelines. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Thank you very much. Councillor Nero. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. I, I think that this report tonight, I don't see a, a problem in accepting this report from the fire department. And if we need to look at a, at a ban, which I'm not saying I'm in favor of, but I think we should look at it separately on another resolution, specifically asking for that, okay. and debate that item on another night. This is a report, and I think that we can accept that without looking at that issue. Thank you. Councillor Butman. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's uh, of no use to say I agree with everybody, but I agree with everybody. A <laughs> uh, slightly s s different twist. The fact that the retailers are selling these items on a regular basis and people are buying them, they're kind of contradictory. You say, okay, they sell them and people are going to use them, and we're going to say, sorry, you can't use those anymore because that's what it amounts to. Uh, we visited this many years ago, I'm sure Councilor Manzo will remember, and it became a rural versus an urban issue. The folks said, we purposely bought property way out there so that we could have, one of the reasons was to have our open pit fires or whatever. So uh, I too say, let's accept the report. I'd like to think we could go to zero tolerance, but uh, not after this report. I'd like to see uh, Mr. Milosevic come back in the fall, perhaps, because I, I'm assuming this is the season that will start and, and with very specific, a more specific uh, detail as to what happens in these visits. How many and what are people saying? Because to hit the offenders, I think, is the key. Half take out permits and half don't. And probably the people who take out the permits are the people that are will read the bio uh, or whatever we've got and abide by it and be good neighbors. Those who don't bother taking the permits, and I may be stereo or generalizing here, but those may be the people who say, the heck with the permit and I'll burn whatever I want to. I'd like to see the offenders really hit with a severe fine. And hopefully that gets out there and that may be a way of uh, addressing the issue a little bit better. Zero tolerance, I, I'd like it, but I, I but also, I, I'm not on just on the nuisance. I, I believe that it is an environmental hazard to people who breathe this in. Uh, so it's, it's uh, 